Fresh off the road from a long drive, we are back to talk about what went down at the U.S. National Championship. We look at the players and the decks that made the news from this event. While we're at it, we might as well take another look at those spoilers we saw coming at the event, how we found out about them, and the direction the design of the game is taking across the galaxy. This is episode 101, a U.S. Nationals recap. You have been well trained. No, you don't I have to carry a sword to be powerful. No. I won't fail you. Oh, yes. do not. I'm not afraid. Please don't try. All right. Everyone, we are back. Uh, we took a hiatus last week. I gave Mike and uh, Kim the night off, even Woo! though they were both ready to do a show, I think, at 9 o'clock. Yeah, I was ready. <laughs> like, we're like, uh, er, I'm already up here. Uh, but I was not. I was nowhere near a computer at that time. Uh, as as we, me and uh, Sarah traveled to meet up with Ruben to cover the U.S. National Championship over the Nova Open, which was super fun and happens to be uh, the the primary subject matter here of the day. Uh, but before I jump into that, the fun part, because we'll start with the fun part of that. Um, I, Kim, you've got something new and exciting that has very little to do with Destiny. It does, but it it did keep me busy last week. Um, we adopted a new dog and she's run away or else I, well, I attempted to pick her up earlier and she's kind of a chub. She wasn't, but, uh, that. she wasn't super happy about that. So I'll have to find, I'll have to set out some destiny cards and maybe try to get a shot of her playing. She's pretty smart. But, I think she could, <laughs> I bet she can roll dice better than I can. How do you... I mean, grant, granted, we used to Instagram pictures of Porgs playing destiny. So that's true. I mean, I guess your Corgi is, uh. Her name is Waffles. It was almost Leia Corgana. Like that was in the la- in the running. Because I'm I follow uh, Obi Wan Kornobi and Anakin Skywalker also on Facebook and their corgis. So. She could have had her own Facebook page, and she y'all probably could have will. She probably will. Yeah. But now she's got a friend. People, it's dogs whose names are food oriented. And then we can't talk about her because it's unrelated to this show. It's not a food. I podcast. know. We should have named her Leia, man. Maybe that'll this be her nickname. I don't know. She'll answer to anything. <laughs> <laughs> That's about as far away from what we're doing uh, as possible. So she, <laughs> is, she has kept us busy. So I have not got, I did not get any Destiny played last week because she was had only been home a couple of days. So I just watched, well, I didn't watch the stream. I watched all the breaks on the stream <laughs> because every time I had a break in a meeting at work, you guys had a break in the stream. So I finally caught up with you guys on Saturday. Some of the games went pretty quick, so I totally get. Uh, there were probably more break slides than there were actually gameplay on some of those days. I came in, answered a couple questions in the chat, and then back to another meeting at work. But stream was fun. What I got to see of it. Otherwise, the break page looks wonderful. And that is all attributed to Mike Hill. Good job, buddy. Make some some sweet looking uh, Twitch graphics for us. <sighs> Easy cheesy. Sorry, yeah. I got it. The dogs are in here tonight, so I'm going to try to keep them quiet or I'm going to chase them out. So if I disappear, it's because I'm chasing dogs. All right. And and Mike, I haven't talked to you in like two weeks. I have no idea what's going on with you. Uh, uh, work has been very busy, but I have been playing some Destiny. I'm getting ready for a Trilogies event coming up. So <laughs> Ooh, Nice. Yeah, I'm work. excited. That it, is it you something your locals doing? Yeah, it's local. Hey, I ask in... the questions and then you can ask your questions. <laughs> Don't step on top of me. It's in... Uh... I want to say Monterey. Okay. So it's close. You have such it's like cool names. So within like 40, five minutes or so of me. Hmm. So I'll be traveling. What are you going to take for that? Uh, probably emo kids. <gasps> Ooh, fun. Uh, I, I need was, to. I was thinking about doing the, the, uh, the craft deck, but I, yeah. I still just really like the emo kids. Anakin, I think is the better pair for my style. And if you don't that get that sense. battlefield, oh, it's so tough. That, that deck yep. really limps without the battlefield. Uh, and other than that, I have been buying a lot of Star Wars toys lately. <laughs> Kenner just came out with the new uh, The Last Jedi toys. Oh, Kenner. And it's like uh, it's in the vintage packaging, and they have Snoke and uh, Ray. Or no, Jyn or so. Huh. Who else do they have? That's a cool. Stormtrooper. I don't think yeah. I've seen those They're really advertised nice. yet. Yeah. Huh, no, they don't cool. advertise stuff like that anymore because it sells so uh, fast anyways. That makes sense. That makes sense. And, That's pretty cool. And I've been painting a lot of uh, stuff for uh, Legion, Star Wars Legion. Oh, very cool. Nice. Yeah. So that's been my Star Wars lately. 
Yeah. I'm more Star Wars Z than I have. Yeah. I Although I do Star need to figure Wars-y. out a deck. We've got a local shop that's going to do like standard one Sunday and then trilogy the following Sunday. So I need to oh, figure out something. Oh, that's great. That's awesome. So I need to figure out what I want. I guess I, can, I think the Gungan deck is, I think it's all trilogy. For the yeah, most part. Go. I you need could to probably swap out again. any older any older cards. You probably find a, an equivalent. I think my rose stuff. Eh, my rose deck is not my rose um, partisan times two is not all trilogy. So I'll figure out something else. That's cool. I'm there's plenty of cards to choose from. I'm sure. Yeah, I, can figure right. out I mean, out. yeah. Um, so obviously, uh, my my destiny has been pretty much yeah. uh, tied to everything happening at Nova. <laughs> um, <laughs> And, and just to start off, uh, before I get into anything about what happened at the event and me sharing any kind of learnings and news, um, I just wanted to give a shout out to all the amazing people that either helped make it happen or that we met along the way. Um, Chris Sandlin and James Self ran a, a solid event. Uh, as, as far as I could tell, there were no hiccups in the in the pairings and any of the side events. Um, it, they had one uh, double buy issue on like round two of the first day. They they solved real quickly and and made it all happen uh, seamlessly. Uh, all the judge calls were handled excellently. Roy oh. Scales for always championing FFG at the Nova um, and all their games. I know he's their primary point of contact. He's just excellent. Um, Andrew Cox, Todd Rowe, and Billy Felon uh, jumped in and commentated throughout the weekend. So a little uh, a little hyperloops and a little uh, Knights of Ren action. Uh, and then, of course, Billy, friend of the show, Billy. We love Billy. Um, oh, Ruben Sanchez, oh, yeah. of course, for hanging out with me all weekend to do commentary. Um, that guy. Jeremy, uh, who was always awesome to the cr- content creators and uh, hung out with us a little bit he throughout is. the weekend and uh, just shared his thoughts and uh, was very supportive of what we were doing. And um, and finally, a shout out to Charles Harrington for asking me to sign his Chance Cube dice tray. Wow. No one has ever asked me to sign anything before. And I'm sure the look I gave him was like, why do you want me to sign this? And But I got a picture of it with them. I will post it on Facebook later. Nice. That's cool. Hey, uh, it, it is a, it's a really nice feeling. Like, Sorry, I just had to get that out. I had somebody come up at Origins last year and knew the show and was familiar with the show and so we got a picture and it was the coolest thing ever yeah. so i thoroughly enjoyed that and he was such a nice guy yeah goofy smile and everything for me um but so nova was nova was exciting and um before we jump into the news elements from nova um i just wanted to kind of give a highlight on some of the side event stuff that they did um they did a battle royale uh where they kind of did a modified deck building rules you could bring one non-unique character but you brought two dice of it so it's like an elite um mm-hmm. and you brought a 20 card deck but the deck had to match color and faction so no neutral cards um okay. which is interesting so it's either hero cards or villain cards uh which was pretty interesting they they banned a couple cards they knew were really broken um in that format uh everybody seemed to have a good time um, one thing about Nova, if you ever like on the fence, like, well, Nova is not like a GQ where you go and like grind for points and spot glosses, right? Um, but FFG is always pretty. Um, mm-hmm. I don't want to say I don't want to say generous, but they always they always throw something to Nova as a giveaway. So like um, everybody who participated in the side events, every every single time you got one of the um, new full art hidden motives that they were giving out Gen Con. Nice. Um, yeah, nice. And I know top four at the draft event took a spot gloss executioner. Those are sharp which is, looking. Which is like a like a two hundred fifty dollar card when you when you look at the the eBay value right now, so that's I solid. Know, that... I mean, did you get to I, play in that battle royale or no? I did not get to play in the battle royale. I did play in the draft, but um, the battle royale looked really fun. The problem with the battle royale it was always um, during uh, oh. during the main event, so it was hard to kind of get away to do that. And I didn't bring a deck. So anyways, and they did staff challenges. So FFG doesn't run any of these events. Like they let Nova run everything. So all the OP guys from FFG just like go do staff challenges. They were doing the um, hidden motives and they were doing um, spot gloss stormtroopers from last year. If you beat them. The downside is they were playing decks that had the new cards in it. They did that last year too. So uh, that's where Thrawn Uncar came from, right? Fun fact, um, Honda Yoda, which is, uh, is, is important on action cheating and special chaining. Uh, does very poorly against um, Iden Versio, which shuts down action cheating. And that <laughs> uh, new stupid support that uh, when they when they play it, they allow you to like stop die flipping. 
Uh, oh. We'll talk about that one in a second. But it's man, it's it's awful. I hated it. And of That's course, I lost. <laughs> And even though, like, Jeremy's, like, you know, sitting there, like, I don't know what to play next, because Jeremy's playing, like, Jeremy's play style is in set seven, eight, nine, right? He's testing, he's testing and playing with cards that are coming out in a year from now. Yeah. So he never plays in the current meta until he comes to these events. So it's, it's hmm. crazy. That's pretty interesting to always be playing that far ahead. And you have to, yeah, like, remember right? what you used to play. Right. Right. So he's, and, so, so he's like, yeah. yeah, I never play meta decks. And I was like, well, I haven't played this meta deck either. So let's give it a shot. <laughs> well, then yeah. you got to be careful not to say, man, I wish I had the, oh, wait, that's in two sets. Like, right. Yeah. I, you know, he's pretty tight lipped. He is. Uh, he's not a big talker, but. And uh, there was a panel at Nova. Um, and the yeah. downside, I think, something we want to suggest next year is for just better advertising because it was still poorly attended, uh -huh. I thought. I mean, like 15 people showed up, which was like, I meh. Was yeah um but they got oh uh ruben uh from the chance cube and uh um rick from knights of ren they got joe from the hyperloops and they got um uh john jack from the golden dice and then jeremy was there obviously um i hosted it and i, th I thought it went really well jeremy was of course tight-lipped i tried to get him to tell us the uh what kind of punishment we're all going to take for using a negative point plot card but he wouldn't spill the beans oh um, i was like what's uh, what's it going to be um but uh there was some i mean some interesting things like he you know he um he really didn't feel he didn't feel he didn't realize snoke was going to be as powerful as he became um which is interesting Mm -hmm. I don't uh -huh. know how I feel about that. Like, how do they not? How do they not? Somebody play test. Well, that? okay. I think I think he may have thought it, and I think maybe the you know he took some advice from the play testers who thought it wasn't going to, um, who thought it needed to be more powerful or, or whatever. I don't know. They were. I I think a good. I don't know if we'll ever see a, a fix because you know I, I'm getting ahead of myself. Anyways, no. Sorry. Damn, I drove you down Snoke. that path. You did. Um, speaking of down that path, why don't we just go ahead and jump in and talk about the spoilers that uh, we did discover. Oh, yeah. All right, let's head over to the news. Let me take that back, huh? News find what you need. <laughs> so the wonderful thing about uh, Nova is that they do staff challenges, right? And, and if we're close to a new set, the staffers will bring decks that contain new cards. Um, now they didn't they didn't have all the cards available to them because I'm pretty sure they were told which cards they could bring and couldn't bring. Uh, sure. Fortunately, uh, we saw eight cards that we hadn't seen before um, that were uh, pick people grab pictures of them who were playing against the staffers at different times. Um, the first of which was Jen Erso. So we got a, a full look at uh, the new version of Jen Erso, probably more playable than the previous one. Yep. <laughs> To um, say the least. Uh, this time a red character who has the leader subtitle, which is interesting. So we see Jeremy continue to develop um, these sub titles of mm -hmm. the characters, which is cool. Um, 12 health point health character, uh, two range, two range, modified two range, discard, discard, blank. 13, 16 is her point values. Um, after you activate this character, you may look at the top three cards of an opponent's deck and rearrange them in any order. You may discard the top card of that deck. So look at three cards, discard one, put the other two back however you want. Essentially. Essentially. That's what yeah. it says. And that's that's crazy. That's that oh, hurts yeah. real bad. It's like a um it kind of has a similar effect to like Scruffy or Friends in Low Places, but it's it's affecting the next hand, it's not affecting the current hand. Right. Which is right. really interesting. Like you're getting you're getting information like Thrawn gets information every time, but it's like not current information, it's you know, one step ahead. So it's really interesting mm -hmm. about that and her character too. Mm -hmm. hmm. Um, you know, of course, Ruben's first thought was Mill as an option, but she's got three damage sides. Yeah. Yeah, her die is interesting because it does have that disc. Those right? It's is it one or it's one discard side? Two single discard two. sides. That's yeah, what I thought. Singles. Okay, so two. So all um, she has is range damage hmm. and discards. And two solid range. That's she's like, confused. Yeah. <laughs> I don't well, know. and I feel like it's hard to build a deck like that. Like, so it's that the Rose deck I have has indirect and it has mill. And it's sometimes that's helpful because if you're going up against another mill deck, then you're going to win on the damage side. But I don't know. Like, it's hard to, you, I think you feel conflicted when you play it. I don't know. Mm -hmm. She's very, she's aggro with control. 
which is true, which is kind of cool. Mm-hmm. It's maybe look, seems like looking a really at character. Uh, yeah, and looking at Mill as a way of controlling things, not as a way, not as a win condition. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah, you're you're yeah. only looking at those top three cards and discarding one for control and information. It's mm-hmm. not a Mill strategy, and I don't even know if you'd and, really take. Well, it would be nice you take those mill sides uh if you really want to get rid of those top three cards you would Mm -hmm. yeah you would just play play the mill cards right off the top of that after that you know yeah it's interesting and i i mean i could see her maybe at one die being in a deck with like a three wide as one of her because she's in a way she's kind of similar to what casting can do Mm -hmm. um except that she just takes a card off anytime she activates not when a die is resolved so there's no way to get around it. It's kind of like you know, it's kind of like Vader's activation. No one plays Vader anymore because he's right. too expensive. But um, these things you can't get th- and Thrawn, right? These things, these effect- abilities you can't get away from. So it's right. kind of nasty. And your opponent can't see the cards, right? Yeah. Yeah. It says so you're you looking look at the three at the cards. Three. Yeah. It, so you have information if your oh, opponent doesn't yeah. have. I mean, they know what you discarded because now you've seen <laughs> the discard pile. Yep. <laughs> Gnarly. All right, let's move um, on. Yeah, and so uh, in addition to that, we got her blaster. Uh, so this which is was nice. A sick weapon. Um, a three resource cost weapon, um, which are now more prevalent, I think. Three resource cost mm-hmm. is uh, actually not a big deal because we got so many resource generators in the game. Yep. Um, two yep. range, three modified range, three indirect, one discard, one shield, and a blank. Redeploy. After you activate attached character, you may reroll this die. Or discard the top card of a deck. If this mm. upgrade is on Jyn Ursa, re-roll any number of her character dice. Ooh, that's like, um... Ah, I can't remember what the other weapon is. It lets you re-roll the, the stick. Stuff. The yeah. stick. The, 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 the bad stick. Yeah. yeah, the bad stick with the blasted <laughs> shooties on the end. <laughs> what the crap is that thing called? Uh, is it the electrostat? Yeah. No, nope. not yeah. the electro staff. The Magna Guard electro staff. No, it's the it's the nines weapon. It was the nines weapon. I should know this. Oh, the executioner's. Uh... Uh... No, it's oh, nope, that sooner than that. It's the baton. Yes, right baton. Yeah. Golly, that hurt. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, yeah, it is really kind of a hero's right baton, and you get that extra um, mill action if you want to, which. Now you're controlling two cards because you have well, Jen's ac- action with it. Yeah, exactly. You. This is now roll, roll in. Look at three cards. Discard two. Put the be- put the third one back on top. Nice. Pretty nasty. And then if you roll into those, well, no, that would be in their hand, so it wouldn't do any good. Never mind. So and you uh, could, I mean, theoretically, on one roll, you could do seven damage, and uh, mill two cards. With I mean, that's it that's, helps getting that's those cards role. out of somebody's hand. Like you're taking away their opportunities. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for sure. Um, mm-hmm. And fun mm-hmm. fact, uh, Jen Arso and Cassian can both be played together elite. I wondered. I never. I hadn't looked up the cost. Yeah. That'll happen. Uh, she's 16 and he's 14. So you know. He's now got you a range have... side on him too. Someone right? needs to make the alt art where they're just sitting together. Oh. <laughs> Oh. Um, the next one we got so we, oh, in one of the articles we got the TIE Fighter um, we finally now have a full look at the X-Wing which is you know the mirror version for the hero I side dig it. I dig it you can include one. up to four copies of this support in your deck it's a two resource support um, it's die is uh, got the infamous X's um, X range, X range for a dollar X indirect one discard, disrupt sorry one disrupt, one shield and a blank um, and the X equals the number of X wings you have on the table, so that's going to you know, be bad potentially when you got four. four of them. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, uh, they we're putting more search and finds. It's something that uh, you know um, Lucas didn't ha- want in the game. It's, it's something that Jeremy happen. seems to really want in the game um, because the X wings are search and finds. That I mean, sorry, the Tie Fighters are search and finds. I'm surprised that the X wings are not, but I wouldn't be surprised if there is a search and find support card. There's got to be uh, in the future. You would think so, yeah. But hmm. it's hard because with a 30 card deck, a search and find is like a like it's a, almost a dead card in a way. 
not a dead card. It helps yeah. you get things faster, but it, it gets you through your deck faster too, which is oh, yeah. 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 I don't know. If you have four of them, you ought to be able to turn one up. But... <laughs> right? Yeah, four X Wings. There should be all four. Mine be on the would bottom. be the four yeah. mine would be the last four cards. Yeah. All stuck together. <clears throat> oh man. Um, but cool. I mean, I don't know. I mean, this is the, the strength of vehicles is obviously apparent right now. Mm -hmm. Um, do they but need will more? will it stay is the big question. I mean, like, yeah, that's a big deck now, but will it be like, that's always the interesting question. I think right. for aggro to keep up with vehicle or any sort of support deck, they're going to need to start giving us some cheaper two drops or some like strong two drops where mm -hmm. you can really, or some... what's that? Or some solid report support removal, because yeah. that's the one thing we don't have right now. Mm -hmm. True. There's but just yeah, what if, vandalize. If you get that aggro out quick enough to kill the characters, then it would be a better race. But when you're looking at three wide or four wide, you know it's it gets a little irritating to try and ping down that many characters, especially when they're continually shielding. And it's it's uh it's been tough playing against vehicles for sure. Mm -hmm. Aggro needs some help. Um, speaking of some help from ag for aggro, if you're a, if a blue hero fan, uh, Qui-Gon Jinn's lightsaber was fully spoiled. Um, Another nice one, yeah. So three resources, shields. uh, two melee, mm -hmm. three modified melee, one shield, two shield, two shield blank. Um, <laughs> after one or more shields are removed from attached character, you may exhaust this upgrade to give that character one shield. If this upgrade is on Qui-Gon Jinn, you may draw a card. So you have mm. card draw, which is excellent. Um <sighs> And remember, this can be paired with any Qui-Gon, right? It doesn't have to be the new one. It can be the old one, mm -hmm. um, which had a lot of shield weirdness on it. So, um, right, because that one was remove a shield to do a damage, or I can't remember. There was some remember. weirdness with the something original, like that. Yeah, the original Qui-Gon. Something like that. I can't remember what it was either. Um, it oh, every time you get a shield, back. you remove a damage. You you deal a damage every time you gain a shield. To remove a shield. Yeah. Anyways, so I mean, this could work with either one of them. Here um, comes Viper Knife. I'm just saying. Think Viper Knife's coming back? Eh, not for very long. Yeah. But <laughs> we need, uh, for three we months. Need, we need more unblockable damage. That's mm -hmm. true. That would help. Oh, shields can. Chewing through shields like that can be so frustrating. Like, yeah. Oh, uh, it's going to be so frustrating to finally get him knocked off and then somebody turns around and put him back. Like, oh, it's so frustrating. Well, that's an interesting point because I'm wondering are we. Do you think do you think Jeremy is phasing out unblockable damage? Cuz there oh, hasn't no. been any the last There definitely hasn't been any. Well, like Vi Vibro I mean, this wasn't no. Mm -hmm. no. I think the only unblockable damage you have is when you do action cheating at this point. Well, that's not unblockable, that's unmitigatable. So I'm wondering if unblockable like damage is going to disappear. It was unblockable, but I can't think of what it was. I feel like when I was watching Saturday, there was something, but I don't remember oh, what it was. There's an event. There's a, yep, unyielding. Yeah. Is that is a blue event that makes things unblockable? Or a yellow event? Oh, I want to say it's yellow, but I'm not sure. Because everybody watches this, uh, this, this, oh, it's, it's blue. Unyielding from, oh, it's from Empire War, though. Mm. Resolve any number of your blue dice showing damage. Oh yeah, it's somebody in the chat. Unblockable. It's somebody in the chat. The sniper rifle from Rivals. That's I think it's that special. That oh is yeah. So I, I I do I just wonder. Thank you, Admiral Pendragon. Mm. Admiral Pendragon. Hello, sir. Um. Yeah. No, I think that's interesting. Uh, I don't know. Uh, you just said something that made me think. I wonder if unblockable damage is going to go away. Is that that puff of smoke I see above your head? I don't know. It shouldn't with all the shields and vehicles going around. Mm. Yeah. Oof. Maybe we're just getting into a place where you need to go support heavy. And too wide is just not possible. Yeah. Too I mean, wide they, is... They, uh, they... It slows down the game, that's for sure. I mean, third place was was too wide. Uh, yeah, and, and he was... to Nationals. Yeah. You're talking about that Dooku uh, Talzin Rock, deck? And he rocked that. And a, and, a, and a crap deck both tie for third place mm. uh so but i don't it's it seems like support is where it's going uh, yeah i would agree yeah not a lot yeah not a lot of ton of removal with that yeah um 
Speaking of supports, uh, so we got to see the the yeah, the new Millennium Falcon, Millennium Falcon three point oh. The, the, the new, future, new. many of these things going around. <laughs> They'll get it right. Don't get me wrong, I love the Falcon, but dang, man, this thing is ridiculous, though. It is. Uh, heroes have the possibility to get vehicles out for free, right? So uh, you can delve. Yeah, anybody can delve a vehicle out. Yeah. Or can anybody, or just villains? You think uh, Hera, you think this will make Hera come back? Yeah. No, oh, Hera. interesting. Uh, I just that was an odd sound. Uh, the the resource generation is not that tough anymore. Six is not that hard to get to. Uh, I feel like you're gonna see these, and there's no blanks, and it just hits mm. super hard. Three range, four range for a dollar, four <sighs> indirect to discard three shields and three resources you make your wow. money back in two turns on the millennium falcon yeah if you just take the resources and then it's got this weird like escape craft thing which i think we're all still trying to figure out exactly yeah. how it's going to work <laughs> um but you know the, the millennium falcon itself has a search and find for the escape craft um which allows it to attach as an upgrade or detach as its own support and then reattach and I'm like, well this is very thematic, but it yeah. seems Why? very clunky to me. <laughs> it does it does have a little clunkiness to it. Yeah. And but, it's it's a good it's a good support. Mm -hmm. uh, I uh, re roll, re roll shield resource two resource, no blink. Not bad. If, uh, and you get it for free. If anybody's got uh leagues out there who do uh who do like themed things they need to do uh, this needs to be one of those things. You need to have a Millennium Falcon yeah. come out with an escape craft and like dock it and redock it five times in a game or something stupid. <laughs> I was like, what is this? Star Where's Trek? Nate? That's a Nate deck right there. You have to like undock it from the Millennium Falcon and redock it on a different vehicle or something. <laughs> okay, so that happened. Uh, anyways, uh, moving on. Um, <laughs> Uh, we got a couple uh, other random uh, additions. The Inferno Squad ID-10 secret yeah. droid. It's better than um, ID-9. Uh, one resource uh -huh. to play. <laughs> uh, one melee, one focus, one focus, one resource, two special sides. Uh, the special says look at an opponent's hand and discard a card from it, any card. Uh, that opponent may take one additional action during the next turn. So the interesting, except that when you pair, her, pair this... Uh, card with um Iden Verso who when there's a die when she has a die in the field the opponent can't take initial actions um negates the, ne negates the advantage to the opponent when using the special yeah or you just take this at a time when uh they don't have any more actions to take anyways right sure. yeah then it doesn't matter if they're like you know if they ha they're like rolling out like just garbage and they're like pitching pitching to reroll and they won't pitch that last card because like they gotta play that card and then yep. you play this like that's just like a that's a hate move right there but <laughs> I mean they ain't gonna take any additional to flip actions the table. after that. <laughs> that's funny. <laughs> and again, more cards with uh, zero blanks. Yeah, I like those. <laughs> you can roll, you'll roll something, Kim. Not when you're playing against <laughs> it, you don't like it. Uh, you roll the one side you don't need. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. That's what happened in the Gungan deck, but yeah. Um, and then the last card uh, that we saw this weekend, um, which I played against and uh, and realized that Yoda Hondo just dies and any sort of special chaining, like this, is, this card was designed to prevent special chaining, um, called Improvised Defense, one resource to play. It's a support. So this one kind of um, works like um, that red support that just came out, uh, Suppressive Fire, maybe? Okay. Um, after a die is turned, you may discard the support from play to remove that die. So it is not an action in itself. It's a it's an interrupt. It's a it's a reaction to what your opponent's mm. doing. Uh, so you try to use one die. You say you use Yoda special to turn another die to a special. This card could then be triggered to remove that die that was just turned. So and now your special chaining is like done. And so you could wow. You need to figure out I, how to I, get I guess I didn't realize that that interrupted when I I I didn't catch that at a good glance. Yeah, it's it's. I mean, huh. you know, it's it's a one it's a one time thing. But man, if you're you know if, if Yoda special into Yoda special, and then you flip this to to drop that second Yoda die, and no longer nothing can be turned, 
um i mean you have to play around this if if it's on the table because it's just like this is like sitting on a force throw special and not wanting to roll at your die right this is just yeah. like right. one card it's like oh, i don't want to do anything because i'm gonna get stopped yep uh huh. now that you just have to figure out how to dig this out of your uh discard pile and get it back right in hand. right cycle this thing through i'm yeah. sure i mean there there are probably more and more ways to get things out of discard piles i think in the future i think that may oh, be yeah. That may be the the future kind of mm -hmm. I don't want to say counter, but what's going to make Mill weaker I think is going to be more cards that allow you to dig through your discard oh, yeah. pile and add them back to your deck. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, granted, you know, Mill mm -hmm. didn't survive as well as I think everyone thought it was going to. So everybody prepared for it. Everybody did prepare for it. So uh, um, in another CCG uh, that I play, there is a mechanic where you play another CCG. <gasps> I play Might kill you, heathen. I play a lot of CCGs. <laughs> I'm have a problem. Uh, <laughs> so, anyways, there's a mechanic where uh, when this card comes out, it's like a support or artifact, whatever you want to call it. Uh, whenever a card is discarded, it goes underneath that card until that card is destroyed or taken off the board, and then anything that was underneath that card goes on the bottom of your deck to draw again. Oh. So it doesn't oh. hit the discard pile. It goes so that's like a mill defense, basically. Mm hmm That's kinda I cool. I have heard of this somewhere. So I must <laughs> I must know of the CCG you speak of. I feel like I've had a conversation with somebody about this. You it's, you can name the CCG. This is not it's not like Baltimore. You can no, say this is more fun. Uh, it's like it's fun. light seekers. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, I think that the same. I haven't learned how to play the, that, but I was talking to somebody. About it. They're the same mechanic in Champions too. Age of Sigmar. My apologies. I don't. Wow, that is nope. loud. <laughs> I don't even know what that is. Um, interesting. I mean, I could see. I, I, I mean, this game is rapidly uh, developing. Mm -hmm. Like every single set seems to have some sort of new tweak to a mechanic. Um, and I can see, I can see whole new things coming out. I would not be surprised if we see some sort of quest type mechanic or, or, or something like that nature, more interaction with cards on the table, um, more cycling through your deck, I think would really, uh, make this game interesting. Yeah. I mean, the goal, the goal is ultimately how consistently can you draw the cards you need to play, right? Mm -hmm. And how can you manipulate your die more consistently? And that's why... Um, certain decks sit so well uh, and nationals and and we'll talk to them talk about them in a minute but um, mm -hmm. I think you know uh, of course Jeremy's tight lipped about anything as much as you want to like say well is this coming he's like maybe maybe not I was like dude Jeremy Jeremy I just want a Death Star he is play. really good at that that kind of like you get nothing I, want like, I just want one of the Death Star <laughs> <laughs> right I'll just spread over four sets oh man anyways um, oh God, here it comes again. So, I mean, I think other than that, uh, news-wise, out of Nova, I think the you know the like I said, the panel is really interesting. I don't think we really learned anything from it. Um, uh, you know, there was nothing new about where the game is heading. I think uh, there's a lot of opinions out there that, of course, standard is. We I, I asked a lot of questions about rotations and sets. Um, you know, standard is the competitive uh, choice for worlds. Um, someone made an interesting point that uh, you can go to a GQ and get a world seat in a trilogy event and then go to worlds and have to play standard format. Um, we talked about playing trilogy as a way to prepare for the rotation coming up. But um, with that being said, the rotation in of itself includes a new set. So you have to kind of modify your, your thoughts to that. Right. Um, and then uh, I tried to get something out of it about infinite, but but nothing. Yeah, well, Will I mean, Infinite what be played? did you expect to get? I mean, I I don't know. I wanted something. I feel like there's nothing like that's gonna be a lost format, in my opinion. Infinite. Yeah. yeah I'm really curious to see if anything comes out. It's of gonna that. be that's hard. A weird middle ground. Mm -hmm. I I could see it being popular, maybe when in this in the next rotation, like because yeah, because yeah, Awakenings and Spirit. I mean, they they aren't. I mean, they're a little hard to get. But most of those cards are underpowered, anyways. Mm -hmm. So really, you're just looking for a couple commons and uncommons that are that are a little you know, rambunctious from that set, and yeah. I, you know, everybody's a lot of people have them. So I don't know. We'll see. I want them to balance Vader down, like minus four points. <laughs> right. Make Vader great again. <laughs> Make Vader great again. I like it. <laughs> uh 
Anyways, I, thank you, um, Less Extreme Tour. Less Extreme Maker. I oh told boy. you guys. You're going to hurt yourself. <laughs> I told you guys on the on the stream at Nova that I uh, I need everyone to, uh, to, to phonetically spell their handles in the chat. Oh, it's Rick. Okay. Well, that's fair. What's up, Rick? <laughs> Hi, Rick. I can say Rick. I can't say less ex ex anyways. Well, nobody goes by. It's less Although, extreme except me, I'm like KT Breezy. It's not that hard. Oh, I didn't realize they need spaces or underscores. It's a less then. extreme me. Oh. Can we just go to the, and let's just talk about some decks, Lord have mercy. Okay, let's do it. After a word from our <laughs> lovely sponsors. You know, Mike, I just can't seem to get the cards I need in the booster packs I've bought. I'm still missing a Mother Talzin, a Darth Maul, and I need some more battle droids. That five wide droid deck isn't going to build itself, and I have all these extra Yodas. Seriously, Kim, I told you, check out Armada Games. You can buy and sell Destiny cards on their website, shoparmada.com. It's just a few simple clicks and bam, you are done. I used it just the other day, and now I got two, count them, two mall savers heading my way. Hey, what are you guys talking about? We're in the middle of a break here. Jason, you know how you've got all those extra cards from all those booster boxes you open? Mike says you can sell them online super easy. No way, seriously? How? i got to make room before this next set comes out. Jason, whether you're new to the game or a seasoned vet, Armada Games has just what you're looking for. You can buy and sell your Destiny singles all from the comfort of your living room. Pre-order the latest sets of boosters and find the droids you are looking for. You can also check out their selection of Destiny accessories. And you'll get free shipping on orders over $75. For an even better deal, be sure to use the coupon code THECHANCECUBE and receive 5% off your Destiny purchase. Visit their website at shoparmada.com. Armada Games. Get in here and game. But you know what I always say. Speak softly and drive a big tank. It's all Rick's name. Yes, if, uh, if, if you're not watching this show uh, on Twitch live, then uh, you're missing out a little bit on, on the, the chat making fun of me, which is fair. Which, Rick, fair enough, or fair not Rick, uh, Mike and I do on a regular basis anyway, so if you miss That's the chat, true. I'm sure you'll... We'll, you get, we'll, if you get it in the shot we'll show. We'll help you out. Um, so, anyways, uh, so the Nova Open, right? U.S. National Championship. Um, and it premier my favorite, event, one of my favorite ones. Premier event here in the United States, uh, and and probably one of the the most um, probably gets the most coverage from a national standpoint. Out of any of the nationals around the world, I think the UK nationals gets a uh, gets a fair amount as well, and some of the other countries um, maybe maybe not as much attention. So it's you know a lot of eyes here. Um, I think we were a little disappointed at the turnout in terms of the numbers. Um, we had 122 players uh, for the weekends, 50 on day one and 72 on day two. Um, what's that attributed to? I mean, Labor Day weekend's hard, right? Yeah. I want to go to a gaming convention. Uh, being at Nova, I can imagine, would be a little challenging for some Destiny players because Nova is 95% minis. Yeah. Right, the only card games that are supported at Nova are Fantasy Flight card games that mm -hmm. are Star Wars related, mm -hmm. um, or let L five R. So, oh, do they? I didn't realize they had L five R there. They did. They did L five R this year, um, oh. and that had I want to say probably twenty five thirty players. Um, so I think I think some more, and, and and we'll talk to we'll talk to them maybe about uh, either better coverage as to what the prizes are going to be in advance. Because I think mm -hmm. knowing I, I and I said this when I walked into the draft, I was like, there are 19 people here and we're playing for four spot class executioners. If people had known that was going to be the prize for a draft, there would have been way more people. Oh there. yeah, yeah. Easy. I think so. Because the entry fee wasn't high, right? Well, I mean. When you consider that every uh, every dollar that Nova makes goes towards their charity, then no, it wasn't high. <laughs> was it higher than your local store draft? Yes. Eh, but, but, was it but if you got one of those executioners, you more than paid for it. Yes, you did. If you yeah. turned around and sold it. And then as prizes, um, we snake draft the legendaries. Everybody yeah. snake got to do that. And then we each got, I want to say, like three or four packs because they had extra boxes left over because nice. they, oh, wow. they could support up to uh, they could support up to 32 players and only 19 showed up so all the extra no, that they just gave out which was great that's that's awesome. Awesome. but of course the primary event was uh the u.s national championship uh they it was played over three days um two days of swiss and then the top 16 from each of those days were uh 
uh, woven into a tournament bracket to do a top 32 cut down to get to the winner this year. So a huge congratulations to Drew Warren, who took the U.S. National Championship with Elite Snoke Afro Battle Droid, the new hotness. That is an interesting deck list, though. Like it is not. Yes, because that's not the that's not the same deck list that I I feel like it's got some surprises in it that people weren't looking for. Um, So this was this this deck was piloted by Drew. It was piloted also by Cody, who was the runner up. Funny Mm -hmm. enough, they were both from the their um, they drove down together. They're from the same playtest group, Um, and their lists were identical. Um, (laughs) And there were a couple. I want to say this was represented a couple. uh, the Golden Dice guys, Jack Jack Bamel, um, and Paul Regard, and Breen Aitken. So there was a lot of the New Jersey area uh, brought this uh, Snoke Afro Battle Droid deck. Um, I'm not sure if all those people from that area, but uh, anyways, that's kind of where we're at with this deck. And interesting enough, we look at um, Gen Con, right? Mill Millpocalypse. Oh my God, Nerf Mill. And then we go to UK Nationals, and now er- now the winner of UK Nationals was the deck that Joe Colin um, built, um, Elite Snoke, Elite Bazine, First Order Trooper. Mm-hmm. And which is a vehicle heavy, it's a vehicle deck, really. Um, it's just got more health than your uh, your Snoke Thrawn, which is what the previous kind of version of this was, right? And now, um, and then access to yellow because of Bazine, because who ever plays Bazine, right? You know, make Bazine great again, I guess. Um, yeah, now, yeah. Snoke Afro Battle Droid is is a droid deck, but funny enough, a Hellfire droid tank is also a vehicle <laughs> and a droid. And with Afro's ability yeah, and a tech team, nasty. Hellfire droid tank can be put down for two resources. That's crazy. Nasty. Um, not to mention that BT1 and Triple Zero, when on the table, um, form a kind of a crazy thing where you're doing uh, one indirect to yourself every turn, which allows you to draw a card, and then you're doing two indirect to your opponent. So it's like, um, it's like a variation on Kylo, but always getting it right. <laughs> yeah. 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 That was nasty to watch on stream. Like, it just here it comes. You get all those um, droids down like that thing. That thing packs can be very painful, right? And we said going into the last game, really, whoever got uh, BT one or trip and triple zero down first, um, yeah. had a significant advantage. And that Hellfire droid tank's just stupid. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, just, it's it's really good. And you can play two of them if you can get mm-hmm. them down um, using using Snoke uh, on the battle droid to get some extra uh, range damage out there or using it on Afra to try to get some extra um, resources. Uh, it's just solid. I mean, it's a, it's a really smart build and it seemed to be the perfect um, the one up against the, the vehicle heavy deck. Cause it got some more damage earlier. I think it was just a little faster and I don't know how you, you know, what's the next, the next thing is going to counter that, but we're at now at a, at a point in, in the United States where, we're going to look towards regional season and there's going to be a whole new set. So mm-hmm. do we care anymore? I, I don't know. Yeah. I read an article today that it was, you know, kind of, at least here in the States, it's, uh, we're kind of, this meta is kind of done for big events anyway. Mm-hmm. Yep. So championships are done. The big, like, so I don't know if I'm trying to think, I don't even think, yeah, there's not really another convention until. So it's if PAX low. unplugged has a GQ, I think it would be the new, it could possibly be the new set. It'd be yeah. close. It'd be real It'd be close. close. You know what's funny uh, is in the beginning of this in the beginning of this season we kind of talked about how they look they're looking to slow this meta down. And that was like not the case at all. I feel like right. it, it sped up so much. Like Mill got yep. fast, vehicles got fast. Like this Snoke Afro Battle Droid hums. It go it like works so quickly it is not a slow mm-hmm. vehicle grindy deck it is like get it out there get a ton of damage done ton of little combos that just get the job done quick and efficient and uh yeah it's it's crazy how quick the meta sped up and it's it's interesting to see us uh move a little bit more uh combo stuff yeah right i, I think we we yeah. early on was like okay um how can i get my weapons out cheaper and faster and bigger but now it's like, okay, if I get these two cards and then play this sequence correctly, now I've got the solid play. Um, and I think we're getting a little more combo-y with our, uh, with our deck builds and, and the way the game is being played, which I think, I think is really interesting. 
Um, you know, the game is the game is always going to be uh, one of um, control and consistency. Um, so, you know, in this case, um, there were a couple different outs, even if the BT1 and Triple Zero didn't come out. There were, there were still some good tricks of the trade uh, to go and get a tech team out, get a Hellfire out early mm -hmm. uh, to do some extra stuff. Um, another really consistent deck, and we saw played um, expertly all weekend, um, Nick Cuenca from the Hyperloops piloted Elite Talos and Elite Dooku uh, to uh, first place Swiss. Mm -hmm. uh, on day one um he only lost one game that day and because there were eight rounds of 50 players i don't think any day of swiss had an undefeated player um and then nick went all the way to semifinals with with a two character deck which is that's amazing a but little it wasn't surprising. a ton of health right how much i think 21 is uh, too low but it's it was it's 11 it was and not 9 I want to yeah, say so maybe it was 21. But it's like, a, like it's 20, working 21. on the witch magic in... Oh, 21. Correct. Witch Force magic for solution. Uh, solution. That was a uh, fun deck to watch him pilot. I, I caught that on the stream several times, and it was it was crazy how much... Yeah, Talzin's ability, being able to flip that flip the card to change the dice. Dooku's ability to be able to change dice. Like, it was... That was a fun deck to watch him play. And fortunately for the, the, the Afro players, they knew enough about the Talos and Dooku deck because um, inexperienced after players would roll out triple zero, roll into that melee side, then Dooku would roll out and, and control the melee side. Mm -hmm. But a lot of them waited for Dooku to roll out before he triple zero saw the table because of that that fact. Mm. Um, but yeah, it's it surprisingly, uh, I mean, very consistent pairing um, and was able to get some uh, great... Uh, I mean, really, and that, that was an upgrade deck but getting uh force wave was key uh, that was a great meta oh, call huge. in there yeah. um and then uh force just speeds and some very efficient weapons and then uh getting uh a binds all things down to try to get everything out a little, a little cheaper and a little faster yeah um but interesting choice but again he's one of the one of the best players in the world he always tends to top um top cut uh, all these major events uh and to pilot a deck that really no one else brought to the to the game right mm -hmm. and yeah. a two character list um uh and dave karuna Car karuna sorry dave i'm putting that last name um he was the only person to bring crap to the top 32 and i don't mean crap as in a bad deck but i mean crap as in kylo price um another solid uh two character deck see you later rick later buddy yeah, it's crazy you, that the two character lists are still able to a thing. I yeah, mean, they're still putting it down. There's a lot of two characters, a lot of E Kylo mm -hmm. Snoke, a lot of uh, mm -hmm. Snoke Thrawn. One, yeah, one crap. One Luke Ray. I could do without some Snoke for a while. I'd be okay with that. There's, <laughs> there's so much Snoke. Well, and I feel like we said we. I don't know how many times we said, man, any deck is a meta where any deck can really do well, mm -hmm. and I. I just was like, really? God? Like, I guess I was a little bummed to see so many of, of almost the same deck. Yeah, a lot of, to a lot of Talzin there. Mando. But Mando. It's not, they're not bad decks. Yeah, that was a good deck. Yeah, those are fun decks to watch. That's uh, what won Gen Con. Or no, that came in second, second at Gen Con. Second. Gen. Yeah, the, um, the Talzin Double Commando uh, was very well represented this weekend. Um, the, the Snoke Bazine... Um, Trooper was also well represented because of its win at Euros. I think a lot of people mm -hmm. just had to pick that one up. There's, um, that was on stream at least once because I remember seeing yeah, mm -hmm. Bazine go down. Yeah. Uh, Snoke Thrawn, which uh, I know um, Rick piloted mm -hmm. uh, from Knights of Ren. He piloted that in uh, Top 32. Um, and there was one Snoke Thrawn that made Top 16. Uh, Nick Obi, who was the winner last year of u.s nationals um also oh sorry nick brought snow kylo uh and not, i was gonna say he didn't it was nick wilson that won nationals last year i'm yeah well see i'm just i'm just burgering all these all this I, wow so never mind going back to rick uh from the knights of ren uh snow <laughs> Thrawn, um solid and i believe his was a uh, his had some some different things in it than we've used to seeing in snow Thrawn, which really made it hum um pretty well uh his his deck his uh, top 32 game was on stream if you want to check that out over at twitch 
um because all those all those games are still archived there for at least 30 days they're going up to youtube in the next week or so um nice but were you guys surprised that uh that mill the yoda cassie and anakin deck uh didn't cut it i'm i'm not surprised i don't feel like i and, and once everybody's seen it they figure out how to play around it and tech for it and if you tech mm -hmm. against it it's not that tough of a deck to beat uh, and especially with these three wide vehicles that are just putting down a ton of damage quickly, there's, mm -hmm. there's nothing they can do about it. I mean, Mills at a significant disadvantage because they're not generally doing damage. So mm -hmm. none of the characters are ever going to disappear. And then if you put out more and more support dice, like you can only control so many die every turn. Exactly. Yep. Right. And you roll out the, your lower tier characters and get them to control those die because they can still do damage. You can still ping them away with the low end characters if they don't want to control them. So it's it's a very tough decision, especially with three wide. Right. So. And uh, I think everyone expected the Talzin double commander deck to do better than it did. Um, and then Luke Manganson, uh from the Destiny Council and the Michigan area um, he took Afra double executioner uh, to first place in his day as Swiss to unfortunately lose in top 32. Um, but that was a solid deck that did not have a Snoke presence. Mm -hmm. um, that's, and, and that was very, I think, I think kind of similar in a way to what um, Snoke Afra battle droid was trying to do. But instead of having the Snoke ability to gain, you know, extra resources or extra damage had the executioner, which was able to uh, reactivate itself um upon upon death of things and people mm -hmm. uh but still had the triple zero bt1 tech and uh some other things so kind of a neat way to look at two different decks that uh have some similar elements and kind of mix and match some different yeah. things so so really when you look at the assortment of decks um there is a little bit of uh learning to be had in terms of uh you can take what you like from one deck uh oh, and yeah. and build around it in a totally different way yep um, and that's what's fun about this game. That thank you, thank you for adding that in. Mm. That was the um, cherry on top. Thank you. It was the cherry on top. Uh -huh. that's, what so, that's what I did. Uh, so uh, overall, I think forty-three percent of the decks represented at nationals had Snoke involved. That's insane um, to me. Ooh. For me, that feels like we're going to see something happen. Not what, not to say that Snoke's overpowered, um, and maybe he is. Uh, but we've seen it even like we saw it with Ayla. Like they they balanced Ayla. I didn't necessarily think Ayla needed to be balanced, but they felt like she was in enough decks that were winning a lot of things. They wanted to mix up the meta. So I didn't well. feel like she was winning to even at this to have that much representation in a big. I don't know that Ayla had that. Maybe I'm wrong, but maybe Snoke gets stomped on in this next set so that they're not even worried I'm about okay with that. balancing. That's a possibility. Who knows? If they didn't expect him to be that powerful, maybe it's because they were, I don't know. Right. I don't know. I could see his, like, I think, I think what the challenge with Snoke was is I don't think we anticipated, or they, not we, I don't think they anticipated his ability being used to generate resources. Oh, uh, well. Then because they, that's what. More that's, thoroughly play test. <laughs> that's what, that's what made planetary, uh, planetary bombardment come out on turn one. Yep. Mm -hmm. Right. That's that's stupid. I mean, and playing for a bar, it's not even a vehicle. <laughs> so yeah. And it hurts so much to your face. Oh man. So I don't know. Oh, I mean, sucks. there are options. Uh, mm -hmm. We'll see what they end up doing. Um, yeah. All right. I, uh... I I I was I was pleased I was pleased with the assortment, but uh, I think everyone would say that we need. To, uh, we'll be looking forward to the next set to see how it shakes up the meta. Well, we we really funneled down to the very end of the season, and we like saw what floated to the top, and now it's time to mix that meta up again. So. Yep. All right, let's go to the uh, question. There can be no mistakes this time. All right. You looking at me? I was, you, I was looking. I was, I was trying to tell if Jason was looking at me because I thought he'd take off on. So, 
He likes polls. So last week we did not have a question. We did a poll because we were curious what you guys thought uh, if Mill was going to win or if Agra was going to defeat them all. And only, I'm looking at this, um, 36%. Yeah, 36% Mill. thought Mill was going to win. And the other 64% of you called it right. So I that's fair aggro. enough. Voted aggro. I I really did. I, I kind of expected aggro. There was just enough time to prepare, I think. But mm -hmm. So some of our, let's see. You guys want to share some of these wonderful answers? Yeah. I mean, uh, you know, Chris Stevenson said for good or for bad, I think it's Mill's time. Um, Dale Jordan says no way Mill can win at the moment. Um, I like David Jeremy Rock. Christensen, I think Mill will take it, and we have seen a balance of the force shortly thereafter. Uh -huh. uh, interesting enough that um, even though poll wise everyone was uh, kind of leaning towards damage, uh, those for the twelve of you who actually commented, uh, most <laughs> of you said mill. So I hope uh, you voted too, but maybe not. Uh, and then Ralph, Ralph, uh, Ralph said, "Is whatever the hyperloops are playing an option?" <laughs> he was close. He was close. He was close. Uh, most, a lot of the Hyperloops made it into the top eight, top four, and most of them. Uh, Nick Quinka <laughs> kind of had to had to barrel through like three of them <laughs> to get to top four, which was really funny. Uh, but anyways, uh, but I did say because last time we did a show, it was episode one hundred. We were going to give away a handful of FFG promos <sighs> that Mike Hill's sitting on. That's right. I I hope you're not actually sitting on them. I was. Uh, you nice, might bend nice the cards. <laughs> Well, it's got the, you got the best defense in there too. Like that's that's OG Ooh, store champ stuff. Best defense, holdout blasters. Uh, Look at this guy. There's some good stuff in here. There's the new ones too. The new four speed. Ooh, new those are shiny and pretty. Tinker. I like those. There's good stuff in here, guys. <laughs> Do you have the tinker that has the correct cost? Yes. I have the. I currently have an incorrect cost. I think I did get my hands on a correct cost one in my correct, store championship. The, this one is the correct one. I corrected it with Sharpie. So, <laughs> so Kim, are you gonna yes. pull a name out of Where's the Rex? Rex? Pull a name uh, out of Rex. Visit in a while. We haven't done this in a while. Hi hey guys. This is really the dog that I adopted. No, I'm kidding. It would eat less. That's for Dagon sure. It's true. All right. So now I cheat. I did not put everybody's comments in here this time because it was a poll. So I don't want to hear any Michael Hill. I don't want to hear Why? any jibba jabba because I didn't. Why did you didn't write all everybody? these answers? Out. I wasn't gonna tell nobody. I was um because if like if I hold it up enough, you might be able to see it. So. You ruined she didn't, it. She didn't write out it. She didn't write out everything. You Man, what a. It. I didn't write out everybody's full answer. So all name. right, so the winner of how many promos? How many promos is that? I think there's eleven. All right, a a handful, crap ton of promos. Yeah, Anthony Roy. Official. Yay! Anthony. Yay, Anthony. Uh, Congratulations he's, to he's, you, he's, sir. He prefers the classic way because it it gives you the feel that you're actually playing against something real. <laughs> <laughs> That's burn. a pretty funny answer. I don't know. After seeing, um, after watching Andrew Cox, who uh, played, who who won Gen Con um, with that mill deck and had brought that mill deck to U.S. Nationals, um, I, I had to give him credit for for that as a winning strategy. is It's pretty pretty awesome to watch him play that. Um, because we did get to see him play it a couple of times throughout the weekend. Mm -hmm. Anyways, uh, thanks for everybody who, who chimed in on the poll. I think we had over 200 people actually vote. Um, really awesome. appreciate all of that. Um, we were super excited to go out to Nova. We're looking forward to it again next year, bigger and better. As always, try to try to up that coverage um, from the U.S. Nationals, uh, which uh, should be hosting next year. As far as we know, they, they will be getting the U.S. Nationals again. Um, and hopefully we'll continue to add more and more Destiny side events uh, to keep everyone entertained throughout the weekend. If you're not, if you know, and if that's not the thing you want to do, you just want to go and play in Nationals, DC is five minutes away and you can do some sightseeing. You can see Damn. the Washington Monument on your drive-in because I saw that last year. Yeah. Honestly, though, the people that run Nova are so incredibly nice that it is hands down one of my favorite conventions. Mm -hmm. And there's the le there's still plenty of stuff to do even if you don't play. There are painting yeah. classes. There's the lounge. Like Jason said, there's DC to go to. You can come hang out at our booth if you want. Yeah. Um. I hopefully will make it there next year. That would be. And, and next was, year there will be a little chance cuber. Uh, in attendance. Uh, so I know she'll be adorable. 
She'll be, Chubby, yeah, she'll be a, an adorable Chance Keep onesie. Uh, yeah. We'll be good. Chance Keep um, Bib. But, Jason will have bags under his eyes. So, yeah. um, and before we wrap up, I wanted to uh, thank everyone who donated throughout the weekend to help support oh, yeah. both Thanks the coverage everybody. and the Nova Open. Um, I'm happy to announce that we uh, yesterday donated $50 to the Nova Open Charitable Foundation as part of um, your, your guys' contributions. We raised uh, uh, roughly $100. Um, 50 of it will go to pay f- about 5% of the internet fees uh, yeah. <laughs> that we incurred. Uh, and the other, uh, uh, we, uh, as we so agreed to donate that to the Nova Open. So thank you very much for your support. Um, we look forward to, again, like I said, do it again next year, bigger and better. Um, and continue to bring you more live Destiny coverage. We, we, uh, we do realize that is what the people want to see. Um, so that is what we are working towards committing to to doing more of for everyone. Um, so uh, thanks again for joining us today. Mike and Kim, I miss talking to you. I'm so glad we're back in it. I oh, know. Welcome back, buddy. The yeah. band's back together. The again. band's back together. The Looking forward to it. I'm glad you had fun at Nova, though. I'm just sad that I didn't get to make it. Well, next year. Next year. Um, and then, uh, of course, we're looking... Uh, We'll be checking out the results from the Nationals all across the world over the next few weeks um, and looking forward to Across the Galaxy because uh, we know the spoiler train is about to get hot and heavy here. And uh, we're only about two months. Spoiler. It's card game spoilers. We can we can do those. Yeah, those ones are okay. I like those. <laughs> You've got a whole other year before those other spoilers. They just started filming. It's fine. Um, it's fine. So everyone head over to our Facebook page. Uh this week we're going to asking, do you believe the mill apocalypse is over? Leave your <laughs> comments uh, on that, and we'll read out some of your answers next week. Um, and uh, I sort of have an idea of what we're going to talk about, and I think it'll be fun. But I have some homework <laughs> for Mike and Ken, which I'll share Aww. with them apparently. No so, way. Uh, yeah, a little bit of homework. Right. So uh, everyone, thanks for joining us, and uh, tune in next week, same bat time, same bat channel. Peace out, y'all. Bye, guys. This has been the Chance Cube, a Star Wars Destiny podcast, a nonprofit organization dedicated to building community through gaming. Visit our website for all things Star Wars Destiny, including our price watch, meta tracker, and latest articles from the Chance Cube family. Find our latest videos on YouTube, follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, and visit us at patreon.com slash the chance cube. Your patronage allows us to grow this program and help us give back to the gaming community by sponsoring events, giveaways, and supporting our own community building initiatives. This is Mike Hill, the voice of the Chance Cube. Thanks for listening. The Chance Cube is not affiliated with Fantasy Flight Games, Lucasfilms, or the Walt Disney Company.